I want to welcome you back to our series for now in the time of the epidemic. And before we talk, let's have a prayer. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you'll bless our time talking about foundations and what's important. And I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we talk about foundations, we mean that things that go way back are still important even today. And I want to tell you about a time when I was in Romania, when I was just a young man. I was brought there to preach, but no arrangements were made for me to have a translator during the day. Consequently, I was on my own for all day long. I learned some Romanian words. Uh, but in the evening, I remember one evening hearing a very short sermon that really impressed me. If you have your Bible, you can turn to Colossians chapter 3. That was the scripture reading for that sermon. Colossians 3, uh, the preacher said, I want every one of the wives in this congregation to stand up. And if you're a wife, you might as well stand up now. You have nothing else to do while you're inside, right? Just stand up. And, uh, and you know, the wives stood up and he said to them, Wives, submit to your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. That's verse 18. And you could look and you saw all the husbands were grinning. They were all so happy. And he said, wives, you may sit down. Then he said, husbands, stand up. And now the wives began to smile before the husbands even were done standing. And the husbands looked a little chagrined. And he said, verse 19, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter against them. Well, he asked the husbands to sit down. And then he asked the children to stand up. And you know, everyone was smiling now. And he read verse 20, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. And then he asked the children to sit down. And then he surprised most people by asking the fathers to stand again. And he read to them, fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Verse 21. None of those ideas are really new or or a novel, if you will. But those ideas are as old as the hills and yet are just as important today as they ever have been. Just as important it is that ladies show respect to their husbands, that husbands show affection to their wives, that children give obedience to their parents, and that fathers are careful not to discipline in a way that creates bitterness. If you have a Bible, turn back to Genesis chapter 2. We want to go back and see a little more about this foundation that God laid in the family. We're not going to chapter 1, but if we did go to chapter 1, you would see there that in the beginning God made them male and female, that he created them in his own image, that he told them to be fruitful and to multiply. And of course, that happens when you have male and female. But here we are in chapter 2. In chapter 2, we're going to look at verse... Uh, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, or here it says be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This idea that goes as far back as, as, as females go in the universe, this idea that a man should leave his father and cleave to his wife and they will be one flesh, and that she's made of his bone and of his flesh. This is an allegory. And this allegory is explained by the Apostle Paul. Let's go there to Ephesians chapter 5, where this allegory is explained. Now, when I say that this is an allegory, I don't mean that it did not literally happen. I mean the literal event is an allegory of something else. It illustrates something. Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to start in verse 30. In verse 30, it says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 
Did you ever see that before in your Bible? Of his bones? Of course, when it says that we, the church, are from the bones of Jesus, it's a reference there to Genesis where we just read, where that rib was taken out of the side of Adam and turned into a woman. And Jesus himself came here to earth. But let's read on what it says. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined or cleaved to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, well, let's just back up for a moment. A great mystery concerning Christ and the church. I've been around some, and I think if you describe the marriages of men and women, there are some marriages that are close, where the husband and the wife, that they see each other, they care for each other, they nourish each other, they cherish each other, just like they promised to do. But there are some other marriages where, though they might live in the same house, they don't speak to each other much. There's little intimacy there. They sleep in separate beds at night. And then you have marriages that are just holding on by a thread where the man and the woman might live hundreds of kilometers apart or a thousand kilometers apart. Maybe because of their beliefs or because of shame, they don't divorce, but they're separated formally. What about you and Jesus? Do you live in the same house as him without speaking to him much? When you were baptized, you were married to him. What we read is that we as a church are his bones and his flesh. We're one with him. And yet maybe during the day, we can go a whole day without talking to him. Uh, imagine if you and your wife were in the same home and all day long doing your business but never talking. That, that would be a sign that something is wrong. That's what I'm saying today. You can see the same idea in 1 John chapter 2. Is that... Since we're married to Jesus, since he abides with us, let's make sure that we abide with him. Let's make sure that we're talking to him hour by hour, moment by moment. During this time when you have more time than usual, get in a habit that will stay with you when you have less time like normal. Get in a habit of talking to Jesus often. And when I say talking to Jesus, of course, Jesus is in heaven. He's with us by his Holy Spirit. So we treasure that Holy Spirit. And if the Spirit is with us, of course he is. Where two or three of us are gathered in his name, maybe two of you are listening to this, if you gather be to be in his name, he's there with you by his Spirit. Are you talking to him? Are you born with him? Do you acknowledge that he is there? Do you give him proper respect? I'm sure he's giving you plenty of affection, but are you giving him proper respect? And what about the children that you and he have together for your children or his children? Are you provoking them to wrath? Are they learning to love you or are they terrified of you? Do they do what's right in public because they don't want to get treated harshly? Or is it because they've learned how to do what's right when they're not in public? Yes, the things that go way back are still important. The foundations are still with us today. And that foundation of Christ in the church, that mystery of marriage, is as old as the hills. Let's make sure in the time of the plague, in the time of this illness that's spreading around, that the disease in families is reduced, that we develop some healthy experiences with our spouse, that you and your wife or you and your husband, remember that you ought to speak to each other in kind, friendly ways and ought to speak to Jesus in that same way. And then we can know what it says in 1 John, that if we abide with him today, we won't be ashamed of him when he comes. We'll be glad to see him. We'll feel close to him already. That's how we want to feel. Amen. Let me pray for you. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking that you would help the families that are stuck together in this time, in small houses perhaps, to get to lawn so that they could get along in heaven to be sweet and kind in a way that would show that their characters are ready for an eternity of peace. I ask for this gift in the name of Jesus. Amen.